guys, Will here with WTF Car Reviews and today we're going to be reviewing the all new 2023 Toyota Supra 2.0. And a big thanks to Xavier and the rest of the management and staff here at Toyota of Tampa Bay for making this review possible. I'll leave links to your inventory below and if you're looking for a new car, SUV, or truck in the Tampa area, I would definitely recommend checking these guys out and ask for Xavier. And for those of you guys who don't know, the Supra has been Toyota sports car since 1978 around for four generations before being discontinued back in 1998, at least for the American market, discontinued in 2002 worldwide. The most recent fourth generation Supra is the one that you guys are probably all aware of, featuring the glorious 2JZ inline six cylinder engine, available either as a three liter inline six, made it to a five speed manual or four speed automatic transmission, or a three liter twin turbo 2JZ, made it to a six speed manual. The fifth generation Supra that you see here was released for the 2020 model year, sharing many parts of the BMW Z4, including the two liter four cylinder turbocharged engine and a three liter B58 turbocharged inline six. The transmissions are also shared with the BMW Z4. The engines, however, they make a decent amount of power. So not a bad partner to make with a two liter turbo cranking out 255 horsepower, 295 pound feet of torque. And you can upgrade to the B58 inline six, which cranks out 382 horsepower, 368 pound feet of torque. For 2023, the Supra is now available with a six speed manual only for the three liter inline six B58 as a no cost option. And it's standard on the all new A91 MT special edition trim. Available in four different trim levels for 2023, starting with the 2.0 that you see here with a base price of 43,540, featuring 18 inch cast aluminum rims, active cornering assist, and 8.8 inch digital gauge cluster, and 275 wide Michelin Pilot Sport tires out rear, and 255 wide Pilot Sports up front. Some of the stickier tires in the business. You can upgrade to the 3.0 with a base price of 52,500. Now we get Brembo brakes and Pilot Super Sport tires instead of just the regular Pilot Sports. The 3.0 premium starts at $55,650. Now we get heated black leather seats, a 500 watt JBL sound system, and the Toyota Super Connect Safety Sense loaded with advanced safety features. We also get wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto too. We mentioned the all new special edition trim, the A91 MT, limited to only 500 units and a base price of 59,440 bucks. But here we have the 2.0 with a base price of 43,540. What else do we get for that money? Let's jump right in. So up front, first thing you notice is this red paint. It's not a metallic, it's very similar to the paint color of my 2021 Camaro LT1 full LED for the high end low beam. I'm liking the six piece for the headlight, daytime running strip right outside. Ton of airflow for the front, but the rest of the airflow for the side is all non-functional. It aids with the styling, but personally, I kind of wish they gave us some more functional airflow, at least for the side portion. I know it's been a complaint throughout the entire automotive community, but down below, very solid airflow for the intercooler and radiator. Toyota badge right up front. We'll take one more step back, get one last look at the front styling. I like that diffuser, how it angles up towards the side. The wheel and tire setup, very impressive. I wish we had Brembo brakes, at least up front, but the rims are nice with the gunmetal gray and silver contrast wrapped in Michelin Pilot Sport. Summer performance tires dimensions up front are 255, 40, R18. So pretty wide set of tires up front, no plastic cladding, no front parking sensors or anything like that, but wouldn't really be expected. I like the way the airflow would be designed if it was functional, how it leads in from the side and will get extracted right up top for the hood area, but they dropped the ball with that because there's just no functional airflow. Blacked out mirrors with LED turn signal on it. The glass fills up the entire frame. We don't get blind spot monitoring on the glass, unfortunately. Black trim surround the window trim. Blacked out eight pillar, very clean side profile. I love the hips too on the Super. Very aggressive styling the side skirt area all blacked out. The wheel and tire setup, still 19 inch rims wrapped in Michelin Pilot Super Sport tires. Mentions now being 275 40 R18. So with the 275 wide Pilot Super Sport, some performance tires, there shouldn't be any wheel spin at all. And we get launch control for the 2.0 Super. Hopefully we can test that, test that out at some point in this review. Out rear, I see a little Dodge Viper for the side profile and the rear end styling on the 2023 Supra. Dual exhaust, active exhaust, LED taillight, Super badge out rear. I like how the trunk lid angles up, functions a little bit like a lip spoiler, very aggressive Supra badging underneath the Toyota GR in the lower right corner, reverse light down below. Super aggressive diffuser too, dual exhaust tips. Speaking of the exhaust tips, which are active, let's fire up this two liter turbo four cylinder and hear how she sounds.
All right, guys, that was the sound of the two liter turbocharged four cylinder sold by Toyota for the 2023 Supra 2.0. It sounds pretty good for what it is. We do get the active exhaust cranking out 255 horsepower, 295 pound feet of torque made it to an eight speed automatic transmission enough to get this 3,181 pound sports car to 60 as quick as 4.8 seconds. That was a motor trend test. You can upgrade to the 3.0 with the B58 inline six turbocharged engine cranking out 382 horsepower, 368 pound feet of torque enough to get that car to 60 with the automatic in three and a half seconds, about 3.8, 3.9 seconds. If you're really quick shifting the gears with the all new manual, but here's a 2.0 still super quick vehicle. The hydraulic struts are appreciated, very similar to BMW with the style, the way you double pulled the latches and it opens up right up without having to play with anything down below. But again, what you see is basically what we get. The engine's pushed back in the engine bay, which helps the weight balance quite a bit. The strut towers are actually almost completely in front of the entire engine. So almost a mid engine setup with the air intake right up front. But again, what you see is basically what we get. We can shut this thing right up. Pretty big hood, closes up right up too. Take one last step back, walk around this 2023 Supra one more time and then check out the interior for a base, a base 2.0. This is as cheap as you can get it. Smart access for the driver and a front passenger up front. Opening up the door, we get soft touch materials up top. The middle portion is continued for the top portion. The armrest isn't the softest, but it is a leather stitch trim with contrast stitching. Decent storage up front too, auto on touch. For both the front windows, power folding mirrors, four way adjustable. The sound system for a base is actually surprisingly good. You can upgrade to the 500 watt JBL on the 3.0 premium, but this is still a good sound system. Decent little storage pocket down below, similar size to the Camaro. Toyota Supra aluminum nameplate as we step inside, very premium touch. The seats, they're not the premium seats, but they're still super impressive with the red and white contrast leather stitching for the bolsters with some suede Alcantara in the center with red perforation. The seats also have like these faux harness covers in the center with the headrest being fixed as part of the seat. The seats are not power adjustable, at least not for the recline, drop, lift, or slide function. They are power adjustable for the lumbar, which is appreciated for a base 2.0, but taking a step inside, we can really check it out. So first thing I notice is just how low this vehicle is to the ground. You gotta really fall into your place, foot on the brake, engine start, stop, very BMW-esque. The gauges, they're specific to the Supra, not the same as the Z4 at all. The rest of this interior though, can't really say the same. The touchscreen is straight out of a Z4, dashboard, center stack, these buttons in the center all straight out of the Z4. Gear selector, same thing. But the overall design itself, I could definitely see the uniqueness to it. Unfortunately, this thing is not a true center console. That's one of my only real complaints with this interior. But anyway, first thing you notice is the steering wheel. Pretty thick up top. It's not the same as a BMW M steering wheel, but it's nice. We get a good 10 2 bolster notch, 9 3 fits well in your hands. No flat bottom either. Some aluminum surrounding it. The horn area is rubberized. The horn itself, not aggressive at all. That actually sounded like a squeaky little hamster, but no complaints. People should still be getting out of your way. The Paddle shifters are also straight out of the Z4, very premium touch. I'm not complaining about the BMW touches here at all. If anything, they make the car 10 times more premium than it would be if they didn't partner with BMW. However, since they partnered with BMW, the price of this vehicle is a little bit higher than it would be if it was purely Toyota. But other than that, the steering wheel controls on the left side, we get the cruise control on the right side, volume and skip on the right side, voice commands, and you can hang up and answer your phone calls, AM, FM, and Sirius. The stocks have a satisfying click, also straight out of a Z4, auto high beams, auto headlamps, auto rain sensing wipers, also super appreciated, premium touch for a base 2.0. To the left, the steering wheel, automatic headlamps, we have the adjustments for the parking lights too, very BMW-like, interior brightness, beneath that we can get a good look at our pedals, floor mounted accelerator pedal, tilt and telescoping steering wheel, it's not power tilt and telescope, but it does tilt and telescope. The dashboard has a nice stitched material to it, white contrast stitching, soft touch. All throughout the air vents have aluminum stick running through the center. Hopefully you guys can get a good idea of the 10.25 inch touchscreen. Again, basically straight out of the BMW Z4, but it's a nice touch, very premium touchscreen, good response. The home screen includes our music, communication, connected services, my vehicle, and notifications. Press this home button and returns us right back where we were. We don't get navigation, unfortunately, for a base 2.0, but it's still Apple CarPlay and Android Auto compatible. 
compatible, which mirrors your navigation from your phone onto the screen. Still premium touch, solid sound system, the shortcuts down below, dual zone automatic front climate control, no heated or cooled seats, but that's available in the higher trims, no wireless charging either, but we get a USB and a 12 volt right next to it. Real genuine carbon fiber trim too for the center, very premium look. The gear selector controls, the eight speed automatic transmission, the backup camera, we can check it out, button push forward, and our backup camera has really high resolution guidance lines and trajectory. Unfortunately, when you put the car into park, we're still in a backup camera. We're in park, not moving back and forth, but you have to actually press this home button to return to the home screen. Manual shift controls on the gear selector too, if you don't wanna use your aluminum uh, paddle shift, there's the manual shift, you should slap it to the left, up shift and down shift in the proper directions. And watch this, press this park button and the gear selector returns right back to the center for you. Shortcuts, if you don't wanna go through the touch screen, you don't wanna get fingerprints all over the screen, you can use this little dial right here with shortcuts for the media, menu, communication, back and the options. Electronic parking brake, no auto hold, engine start stop, again disabled for the purpose of this review. Sport mode with active exhaust, you can press this button, hopefully you can pick up the difference. Eh, subtle difference. So th this is in sport mode, and this is without being in sport mode. Eh, yeah, very similar. Sport gives you a couple more burbles and a little bit deeper of a tone. You can turn off the traction control and safety system right back here. Soft touch materials for the armrest and the area for where your knee will often hit. This is kind of like the opposite of a Hyundai Elantra for the location of this bar. Similar to like a new C8 Corvette, just not as prominent. We have soft touch for the passenger knees will also hit. The seats are super aggressive buckets. They hold you in your place very well. We don't get an actual center console here, but two cup holders are fixed on this little armrest area of the glove box. We can check it out, pull the latch. It is damped and lined with felt. Not the largest, it's pretty deep though. I'd expect you to fit probably 15-ish license plates in here with no problem. I apologize for the glare. Uh, the sun is directly pounding over the top of our heads right now. Frameless rear, well not a frameless, but basically frameless millimeter thick frame for the rear view mirror. Three garage home link settings on it. Interior lights are LED with a center light too. No eyeglass holder, but really not a big deal. The headliner is just old school Toyota style with this nice little cowl for the center since we have that little engrave for the top portion outside of this car. Behind us, not a whole lot going on. You get the speaker for the bass sound system. You can see everything going on in your hatch too little roll bar in the center with a tunnel cover right up top too. But that's about it for the front seat. Storage wise, really not a whole lot. There's, a, you can fit some stuff behind the seats. You can fit some stuff up top over here. But for the most part, you're gonna have to fit everything in that glove box up front if you wanna have some storage. Well, speaking of storage, let's hop out of the front seat. Well, before we do that, let's check out this window sticker real quick. See any features that I may have missed on the 2023 Supra GR Supra 2.0. Fuel economy is impressive, 27 combined, 25 city, 31 highway for a vehicle that goes zero to 60 in under five seconds. Two liter twin scroll turbo inline four, 255 horsepower, 295 pound feet of torque. And we know with BMW engines, they're usually heavily underrated. Eight speed automatic transmission, rear wheel drive with launch control, active dual exhaust with polished stainless tips. We have a double joint type McPherson strut front suspension, multi-link rear suspension, sport calibrated electric power steering, 18 inch cast aluminum, 10 spoke wheels with pilot Super Sport tires, 255 up front and 275 out rear. Auto leveling LED headlights, LED daytime running lamps and tail lights. Two automatic high beams, pre-collision system with pedestrian detection, lane departure warning with steering assist, electronic parking brake with traction mode. Luxury and convenience, we get smart key system with smart entry, auto folding, heated exterior mirrors, manual sports seats with adjustable lumbar and bolstering, black Alcantara leather trim for the sport inlays, four speaker audio system, but I'm telling you, it sounds surprisingly good because of how tiny this interior cabin is. 8.8 inch display with rotary control. These are just the standard features on a $43,540 Toyota Supra. After about $1,000 for the destination, we're sitting at $44,550. A couple hundred bucks and dealer added accessories totals us out a couple thousand bucks over that. But other than that, we can put this window sticker away. That's about it for the front seat. Um, for the 2023 GR 2.0 Super. Let's hop out into the cargo space. The button to open up the cargo space is right here, down below. And let's take a step out back, see how much space is offered back there, and take this 2023 Super 2.0 out for a drive. So the tunnel cover lifts up, pretty deep cargo space, a little bit smaller than what I get in the Camaro, but the wheel well cutouts help fit some wider objects. The opening itself is not large. I wouldn't expect you to fit golf bags back here unless they're sticking out towards like the center area in between the two front 
seats, but solid storage, plenty of space for groceries. TV wise, I wouldn't expect you to fit anything larger than like a 40 inch TV, but that's still impressive for a sports car like this. You can shut this thing right up simply by closing the tailgate. Let's walk around this 2023 Supra one more time. I think the styling in this thing is absolutely gorgeous. If they added some functional vents, it would be even more impressive. But even without the vents being functional, I think this is one of the best looking vehicles on the road. Performance wise, let's take it out for a drive and see what it's got. All right, guys, now we're just about seeing everything we need to see with the inside and outside of the 2023 Toyota GR Supra 2.0. Let's take it out for a drive. The first thing I noticed, the steering feels really good. It doesn't really change up a whole lot between normal and sport mode, but it doesn't really need to because even in normal mode, it feels very solid. As soon as we get the chance, we'll take a step out here. All right. About third throttle. Ooh. Wow. Transmission shifts really quick. And in sport, it wants to stay in a low gear. Wow, the steering responds super quick. Yeah, we're just holding third gear cruising along. So for daily driving, expect sport to burn a little bit extra gas. All right, guys, taking a step out here. We'll step out onto the highway in a second, but yeah, just partial throttle. This thing feels like it has really good torque. I'm excited to step in the gas. We'll use out these manual shifts. Sure, we're good. Looks like we're good. And on the gas. Oh my gosh. Ooh, yeah, for a turbo four cylinder, this thing can rip. Ooh, yeah. And the thing about the BMW engines, even their four cylinders, they continue to pull up top. Most turbocharged four cylinders, they make all their power below 5,500 RPM. And once you cross 5,500, there's just nothing there. This, just not the case. Yes, around like 1,500 to 2,000, that's when the turbo spools up and you get that instant torque. But it continues to pull all the way up to like 6,500, 7,000 RPM. You can downshift. Yeah, it falls a little bit on its face towards red line but it still pulls really hard up to 6500 it's a decent amount of road noise but you don't really hear that much wind noise which is good steering feels so on center and it's very well weighted cool. yeah the torque is really impressive we don't have to push it a whole lot farther than that put it right back into drive let the transmission do its thing, take it out of sport. Okay, so on the highway, going about speed limit speeds, we're pushing around 1700 RPM, which is why we can get over 30 MPGs on the highway. So combined 27 miles per gallon for a car that can do zero to 60 in 4.8 seconds. Definitely can't complain. And through the twisty, it stays flat. It's not a very sharp twisty, but the steering feels good in your hands. No complaints. All right, guys, we got some emptiness on this highway. We can try a highway pull. Second gear. On the gas. Yeah, pulls very hard. It's not blowing you away. If you want to be blown away by the speed, go with the 3.0, but it's an additional, like, what, 7,500 bucks? For the money, you're getting a lot with this two liter. It's still doing 60 and under five seconds. Excellent handling. You're saving about 100 pounds of front end weight. So for daily driving, I think the 2.0 is more than enough. And visibility wise in this car, you have excellent forward visibility because of the way that those headlight areas are like pumped. You have a pretty good idea of what the, where the location is for the right front wheel. And the rear visibility from the backup camera, there's a pretty large panel of glass. You're probably not gonna be able to pick it up on camera, but the rear visibility is good. The side visibility, it could be better because the humps for the sides, they stick out a lot. But personally, I think that looks really cool. And for like backing into a parking spot, you don't even need a backup camera because you'll know exactly where the rear wheels are thanks to those humps. But again, just cruising along, it's not the quietest interior. As far as wind noise, they're only single pane windows, but it's pretty quiet for wind noise, but the road noise you do hear a decent amount with these Michelin Pilot Super Sport tires. But these are some of the grippiest tires 
in the business so there's going to be trade-offs here and there all right guys we can take a step out here do the turn steering feels so good and good torque on the gas so even in the manual shift modes there's like that clicky thing in the gas pedal so you can't i tried to hold third gear there but once you click that thing on the pedal, it just automatically downshifts you to the most efficient gear. And of course, the fifth generation Super shares a lot of its components and parts of the Z4. Uh, the powertrain is shared with the Z4, the transmission, the wheel and tire options are very similar to the Z4. The styling, however, is completely different and the platform is also completely different. This feels sportier than the, v, than the Z4 that we drove in this channel. The Z4 feels more like a Grand Tour, it has the convertible. Of course, this is more of a hard, hard top sports car compared to the Z4, and it's a little bit cheaper too. The interior quality, it's it's very comparable. I think the Z4 has a little bit higher like door trim materials, but that's not what you buy these cars for. You buy it because of the performance, and performance-wise, this thing is impressive. You sit very low to the ground. You sit lower than the Camaro. This feels sharper than the Camaro. It obviously doesn't feel as fast as the 6.2. But compared to like the 3.6 liter V6 or 2 liter turbo, this feels miles, miles ahead. Yes, we're up there in price, but you're getting your money's worth. All right, but overall, this is a really impressive vehicle. We're currently in just normal mode. In normal mode, the steering stays about the same as when it was in sport, but the throttle gets a lot less sensitive. Although we don't have Brembo brakes on the 2.0 Supra, the brakes still feel very touchy. I'd love to get my hands on a 3.0, see how much better braking the suspension and the acceleration is in that but this is still a really impressive car if you're looking for a sports car you don't, you don't want to pay more than 45 fifty thousand dollars but you prioritize handling and styling over necessarily performance however this is still a good performer 4.8 zero to 60 that's quicker than a mark 4 supra with a three liter twin turbo 2jz obviously you can modify the crap out of the 2jz but stock versus stock this thing is probably actually quicker than a mark 4 and it's only a base 2.0 so overall if you're looking for a sports car around the 45 fifty thousand dollar price point you want to have nice quality materials you want to have good performance and good fuel economy i would definitely recommend checking out the 2023 super 2.0 and a big thanks to toyota of tampa bay for making this review possible I'll leave a link to your inventory below and if you're looking for a new car suv or truck in the tampa area i would definitely recommend checking these guys out and huge thanks to all of you for watching i had a great time making this video if you're new to the channel please subscribe before you subscribe thank you so much you guys know the channel is just not possible without you guys and i really appreciate the constant support but again if you haven't subscribed yet please subscribe leave a like too it really helps me out the youtube algorithm that's how these videos get promoted to new people leave a comment let me know what you like let me know what you don't like leave a comment let me know if there's any specific cars suvs or trucks you want to see reviewed on this channel and i'll definitely try getting those videos for you asap but other than that again thank you guys so much for watching and i hope all of you have a great day